In question 60, we're told that a student set up the following apparatus at a temperature of 25 degrees and at a pH of 7. So what's happening here? We have a protein solution, which is cloudy to start with, and then once 10 centimeter cubes of human enzyme is added, 15 minutes later, the entire solution is clear. Okay, so then we're asked the question, what could the student do so that it would take less than 15 minutes for the solution to become clear? So that's a byword for how could you increase the rate of the reaction? Given in 15 minutes this particular reaction occurs, how can we do it any faster? Well, we have five potential options and we have to assess which is correct. A through E, we can start with A. To carry out the experiment at pH 7, i.e. the same pH as we started, but increase the temperature to 70 degrees Celsius. Well, given that the enzyme works at 25 degrees, increasing the temperature to 70 would likely denature the enzyme i.e. the kinetic energy of the bonds within the enzyme structure would be increased to the point where the bonds would start to break and so the enzyme would not work as efficiently as it did before. So we can say this is wrong. Option B, carry out the experiment stirring the mixture once every 30 seconds. Well we know this would always work since by stirring you increase the rate of reaction by constantly shifting the differential between the enzyme concentration and the substance and substrate concentration which tends to equilibrate if you were to just leave the solution as it is. Stirring always increases the rate of reaction and so we can say this is true. So we already have our answer. Let's go through the others though. So option C, carry out the experiment at 25 degrees at a pH of 13. Well again, like this temperature increase, increasing the pH we have no evidence to suggest that this would be a more effective pH in which the enzyme would work. In fact, it would likely lead to a serious enough change in the polarization of the structure and the molecules within the structure that there would be a change in the hydrogen bonding of the tertiary structure, therefore reducing the efficacy of the enzyme. Moving on to D, double the volume of both the protein solution and the enzyme solution. Well, that would maintain the relative levels of protein and enzyme, and so it would have no effect. And the same can be said for halving both the protein and the enzyme solutions. So we can say our answer is that B is correct, and stirring is the only way of reliably increasing the rate of reaction. And stirring, by and large, is a reliable option to go for, since it always increases the rate of reaction. So we have our answer.